Hello folks, this is Mr. O'Brien, and welcome to the video quiz for Key Concepts 7.1, which covers the years 1890 to 1945. So let's get started. So 7.1, governmental, political, and social organizations struggled to address the effects of large-scale industrialization, the rise of big business, economic uncertainty, the ups and downs of capitalism, and related social changes such as urbanization and mass migration. So put it in a, in, in a nutshell, after the Civil War was the rise of big business, big smokestack factories, uh, modern day factories, uh, immigrants were coming here, this, these new immigrants from southern Europe and eastern Europe were coming here and becoming the working class, they were moving into close-knit urban communities that were kind of centered around voluntary organizations like uh, ethnic social clubs, um, banks and churches uh, that just catered towards their ethnicity. Um, and capitalism was creating this uh, underclass of workers that were diseased and immoral as the stereotype went, living in very densely packed, very busy communities, which to the outsider looked dirty and dank. All right. Um, so both the government and white middle class reformers struggled to deal with this and cope with this and tried to reform it. And um, in the 1890s, as I've said previously, they were the social gospel movement, but by the turn of the century, they became known as progressives, middle-class reformers, men and women that came from both political parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. The progressives were among the first peoples, both in and out of government, that you began to hear arguing for a more hands-on approach. The government should be more hands-on in people's lives and in the economy. So these middle-class reformers, these progressives, at the turn of the century saw themselves as the middleman between the greedy rich and uh, the, the working poor and the too lazy in their eyes, too lazy to work poor. All right. Uh, so let's look at some of the big idea questions. Why did citizens and government officials call for increased intervention in the economy? Why did the U.S. transform from a rural to industrial society and how did this affect the lives of women and other Americans? How did, oh, forget that next question. That's for US 2. Ignore it. Yeah, 7.1 kind of, key, key concept 7 kind of delves into US 2, so uh, that's why we're only going over certain things here. Roman numeral 1. The continued growth and consolidation of large corporations transformed American society and the nation's economy, promoting urbanization and economic growth, even as business cycle fluctuations became increasingly severe. So cities are, are what drew the factories, and the factories drew the immigrants, which became the working class. Hence, you have urbanization, immigration, and the rise of big business. They, were, they all fed each other, and they all scared the daylights out of the proper Protestant, white, Anglo-Saxon reformers, the progressives. Large corporations dominated, and still do, the economy. Uh, Large-scale production of consumer goods, it increased drastically. The turn of the century, by the 19-teens and 20s, you begin to see mass consumption of goods, of magazines, of movies, of, dr of clothing, of books, all right? Uh, you begin to see immigrants going to Coney Island amusement parks and dance halls. Uh, 1920s, you have cars and radios and refrigerators. Appliances begin to replace servants. So be prior to the you know mass consumption, the turn of the century, to be middle-class bourgeois meant you had servants. In the 1920s, with the uh, installation of electricity into people's homes, uh, middle-class to upper-class people, appliances replaced servants. Uh, some new technologies and manufacturing techniques. In the 19-teens, Henry Ford puts together everything that, we, that uh, business learned about production, how to make it more efficient and mechanized for the last hundred years. And he put it all together to form, to perfect it, to form the, to form the assembly line, all right, that was fully mechanized, the, divi the labor was fully divided, and skill was as low as possible. All right, Henry Ford is quoted as saying he wants to make his uh, factory so simple that a trained circus monkey could do it. All right, there you see uh, an example of Henry Ford's assembly line, 19 teens. All right, U.S. transformation from a rural to an urban society. Remember, 1880 was the first census in which uh, more people worked in, manufa in the manufacturing sector than in the agricultural sector as farmers. By the 1920s, 
the census, that census was the first to indicate that more people lived in the city rather than rural areas in the United States. All right, so this transformation provided opportunities for women. They worked in the factories, uh, for example, at textile shirtwaist factories, up, not just in Lowell, but say in New York City in the garment district, in sweatshops. You know, sweatshops were these, it was less regulated. Uh, think like Lowell times two. The conditions were terrible. The hours were terrible. Um, that would be an example of a sweatshop. Actually, no, that wouldn't be a sweatshop. It was worse. The sweatshop was worse. That was just a shirtwaist factory. All right, shirtwaist is tight at, tight at the hip, puffier up here. All right. Um, now, it also should be noted that during this era, there were more opportunities for women. There was an increase in office work throughout this era, the turn of the century progressive era, uh, post-Gilded Age. And as a result, there was more male management, but also more opportunities for women to do, quote, women's jobs, secretaries and so forth, clerical work. Um, but you also saw more women become college educated. But then again, women could not yet become professors. If they got their PhD, they couldn't become a professor because they were a woman. And that didn't happen until the 1920s, that women started, started to become professors. So what did women do? They became reformers. You know, they would open up the equivalent of Reverend Pease's Five Points Mission. You know, Jane Addams working for the, you know, advocating for the working poor in Chicago, Chicago in her settlement house. Now, internal migrants. You have African Americans moving north as well, uh, to, as well as the farmers to the cities. Uh, international migrants. You have these new immigrants, as I mentioned, moving to the cities to work in the factories from southern and, and eastern Europe. All right, and you see the busy streets that looked all dirty and crowded and ugh to the outsider. 